Hello, I'm Paul Raftree, and our topic today is mining a hero in the green energy transition. Today there is a constant debate over whether mining is good for the green economy or not. At Projects RH, where I am CEO, we argue that mining is critical, if not essential, to the development of the green economy. It has been through the benefits of mining which include the materials to make technologies like electric vehicles and other clean energy solutions that the green revolution has been able to occur. What it has done is create demand for mining companies and what they're being asked to do is to go into new areas and develop the minerals which are critical for the battery sector and construction of turbines. This requires new areas of, of, to be developed for mining. What, mine, what minerals have been needed for the energy transition? There are about eight. Copper, lithium, rare earths, cobalt, nickel, silver, gold and silicon. The real challenge lies in the supply chain risk. What's essential in the development of an ongoing green economy is the process of transition. We need these minerals available on a regular basis so that the new tools of the green economy can be built. For example, we need an ongoing supply of copper to allow us to build transition energy lines. Most energy which was generated with fossil fuels has to be replaced with new green energy and this will come from other areas. This means that new transmission lines have to be built. In Australia it is currently said that there will be needed to be constructed a further 10,000 kilometres of transmission lines which in anybody's language would be a lot of copper. This is being replicated all around the world. So the, the supply chain risk is this gets interrupted. The challenge is the economic and social impacts. It is often argued that mining is adverse to the ecosystem, communities and human health. There is always a balance and the price reflects the willingness of people to buy the commodity. What's happening is a demand supply balance is being struck with sustainability. What does sustainability mean? It means that the community is willing to accept the ongoing mining development and this means that the mining people are required to act within what is acceptable by the local community and by the community in general. What is the driver for the standards? Well mostly it is by what people expect mining companies to do. The pillar for this is the 17 United Nations Sustainability Principles. These principles set out the expectations for all projects, but they are equally applicable to mining. In essence, you need community support and you need to be able to demonstrate in the long term that the community will benefit from the mining process. The deep concern is mining will occur but for a few short years, but the impact of what they do will occur and remain with the community for decades to come. The issue then becomes what standards should be applied. And really, any responsible mini minerals initiatives will require an ESG standard. This is a, 
environmental and sustainable ability goal, which applies to the supply chain. The clear, clear issue in this, there must be governance. Mineral suppliers need to comply with the community's expectations and as we said earlier, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Environmental criteria, occupational health and safety standards, social obligations and governance requirements. These best practices are essential for winning community support. Also, there needs to be some direct benefit to the community involved. Many communities are looking not just for short-term jobs associated with the mining process, but the skilling of their labour force so that they have post-mining job opportunities. It's equally important to understand the governments don't want the, the community then to flock the city once the mines have closed. So there needs to be a plan to keep the people employed. Often working hand in hand is the development of sustainable energy projects, such as the growing of crops, which can be used for biomass. These people that are trained to work in the mining sector can then transition across to work in developing biomass projects and continue to supply the biomass to energy projects. The social obligations are more important to most communities than any economic benefit. What they're wanting to see is that their lives and communities are maintained and their values and way of life is respected. In the broader community, mining has to show that it is not wasting water and the process of mining does not leave pathogens or other matter in the ground. So for example, the use of arsenic to extract gold from the ground will not be part of the sustainable economy because you can't leave arsenic in the water system. What's having to happen is the communities are having to agree with the mining companies on how to manage the process. The new challenge is how to convince the community they want to be part of a new mine. What is often the case is somewhere between three and five percent of the capital cost of a mine is allocated to the community to build the infrastructure they want. At the time when the mining mine is being built, there's often equipment brought to site which can be used for other things, such as the building of a town dam, a school, a hospital, and even water courses. This equipment can be used at a relatively low cost to the mining company to achieve a community goal. This brings the community and the mine closer together, particularly if most of the staff come from the community itself. As in all things, it's a matter of balance. And the first one of those is we need to have zero carbon enter the economy. So what people are looking for is that the energy used at site comes from a renewable sources. For example, Vehicles can be powered by batteries or with hydrogen. The power behind the electricity generated behind that can come from solar, biomass, or hydro. So gone are the days where the first thing you a company installed are fuel tanks. What they're installing today is hydrogen tanks and solar collectors. The team at Project RH are working very closely with a number of projects which involve the creation of the biomass which will go into the power projects. We've recently been consulting on a project in Tanzania where the community do want the mining project but on their terms and one of these is that the solar array will generate not only enough power 
for the, the mine, but for the community as well. In this case, we're talking about another thousand people, so not a lot more solar array is required. Equally, when you're building the battery storage so that the mine can operate 24 seven, the answer is you'll just build some more s storage so the community can have their power in the mornings and evenings when they need it. Mining has always been part of the natural order of the community. We've always needed mi minerals for copper, such as copper for building. So in the future, we expect that won't change. And so for, there will be an ongoing demand for mining and everything will need to be held in balance. What's important for the industry is that it meets community expectations. I really would ask you to look at our website. There are a number of references and case studies which demonstrate that the mining community, in conjunction with the broader community, can meet these goals and achieve the expectations of a zero carbon emissions whilst developing the mining, the minerals that are needed for developing the power we have and want to have. Also critical to this is to understand that generators and other power systems require rare earths and graphite to make them work. What's important for the community is they understand that and they work with the business community to deliver the projects. I'm Paul Raftree. I'm CEO at Projects RH and I hope you've enjoyed this discussion.